In this video, we'll discuss the importance of having a good to perfect battery before you start a drive cycle. And a drive cycle is a procedure that needs to be completed so you can get your vehicle's inspection monitors ready for an emissions test. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome back to Random Fix. So I have close to 50 videos on drive cycles and I get a lot of questions every day with people struggling with their drive cycles. And one of the monitors that they really struggle with is the oxygen sensor monitor. A lot of times I ask people, how are the batteries? And they say the battery seems to be okay. I try to go and figure out if the battery is something that could be a problem for them or not. And it's really hard to do that online. So in this video today, I'm gonna to cover the importance of having a good to perfect battery and how to test the battery as well and if you notice my battery here this is a newer battery I have installed in the last four months and I did not opt out for the cheap lead acid battery I actually got an AGM and it's definitely well worth it and I'll cover that a little bit more in this video and I'll show you what was happening with the vehicle before I replace the battery so make sure you don't miss this as I think you'll be quite surprised on how important these batteries are in the newer vehicles if your battery is over two years old or it has actually needed a jump start, that is a battery that I normally recommend to have a load test performed on. And this is not something that you need to go down to the store and have them do it for you as it's very inexpensive to buy one of these load testers. They're under $30 and they're so easy to use. Let me show you how to hook this up. It's got two clamps that attach onto your battery and once you connect it to your battery, it will display the reading from the battery. So for my battery, it's showing that it's above 12 volts. And each one of these little notches indicates 200 cold cranking amps. So you can look at your battery and figure out how many cold cranking amps it is. Mine is 850. So I would go to that notch right there. It really helps to take the plastic off for clarity. <laughs> right there's between the top and the second readout. It'll be somewhere in between there. So it's definitely above that. And I can go ahead and press this button for up to 10 seconds max. If you do it any longer, you will go and burn up the contacts. And if you ask how I know this, it's because I've probably burnt over 10 of these units testing jump starters. And go ahead and hold on to this for under 10 seconds one two three and this will really get hot and release if you notice the voltage did not get into the weak area right here and that lets me know that my battery is in a healthy state so once your battery goes dead or you need a jump start a lot of times this actually damages the battery and it's good enough to start the vehicle and you may not notice any symptoms for months or even years and the real problem with a weak battery is the fact that you're going to get bad information. And notice I did not say a bad battery. I believe a weak battery is actually worse in a lot of cases. As a weak battery is going to start making you think there's something wrong with your vehicle. The transmission can start acting up. You're going to start getting check engine lights for emission related components. And just realize when your vehicle is turned off that there are still components that go ahead and get engaged and disengaged. So a weak battery, in my opinion, is worse than a bad battery because at least with a bad battery, you know that it's bad, but a weak battery can go undetected for a very long time. And I have seen people spend thousands of dollars on fixing a phantom problem that didn't really exist. However, the vehicle's computer is very sensitive and it will pick up on the weakness of the battery and all of a sudden, it will not run the monitor test for the oxygen sensor or even the catalytic converter test as it's very particular on what it's looking for. So you could be driving around for 100, 200, or even 2,000 miles and that monitor test is never performed and you're wondering what's going on. So you start throwing money at parts. You throw money at oxygen sensors. Somebody tells you it could be your computer somebody tells you maybe you need to go ahead and replace your alternator and they'll start giving you all sorts of reasons on why your vehicle's emission monitors are not getting ready and you could avoid all that guesswork by just load testing your battery first this is one of the very first things i do 
when I go to get a vehicle ready for smog. So this morning I went out to start the vehicle and the car did not want to start. It started for a second but now it turned off again and I have no idea what happened. But the battery was just clicking over and over. So you're probably thinking why doesn't he just repair the battery? It's a lot cheaper than going to buy a new battery. And I've seen guys on YouTube say it works. Well, why don't you guys go ahead and judge it for yourself. Let me show you guys the footage and I'll leave you guys a link down below to a video where I actually tried to repair a battery. And I was gonna shoot the video here for you guys for this Battery Mender Plus. And I'm still gonna go ahead and try this out because it was just ticking. So I'm gonna go and leave the vehicle on the Battery Mender here. And we're going to see if it actually changes the battery state and I have a better experience going into the cold. And this will be a long term review. And if you're thinking to yourself, why doesn't he just jump start the vehicle and let the battery charge up? Guys, I have tried this many times and it does not work. And the problems only get worse. And when I talk about problems, these tend to be very, very expensive problems. So let's check out the video and I'll show you guys what happens next. Morning, I had a dead battery. The dead battery caused the check engine light and the airbag light to turn on. And if there was an issue mechanically, then why is the airbag light on? Nothing happened to the vehicle and it was not moved. Hey, Random Fix, how can people support this channel? That's a great question, Mini Random Fix. If you want to support the channel, I'll leave you guys a link down below and also at the end of the video on how you can buy me a coffee. This guy loves coffee a lot. I do. I need some right now. So the check engine light was actually on for a P456, which is related to the EVAP system. And I was ready to make this repair, but guess what guys? The repair was not needed. Six months later, the vehicle is outside and the check engine light is gone. No repairs are made. And I'm sitting happy, all because of a bad battery. Now imagine you replace the transmission on your vehicle because you thought the transmission was bad. That would suck, huh? Well, guess what, guys? It happens all the time. Bad batteries will give you bad data and bad performance. If your vehicle is running super funny, trust me, before you go and get that fuel cleaner or you start putting better gas in your vehicle or start doing a tune-up, test the battery first. If you guys are enjoying this content, make sure you guys give the video a thumbs up because I really do put a lot of time and effort into this video. This video took about six months to make from me grabbing the footage on and off. And I wanted to give you guys the final story and not just little snippets on what happened. So if you guys like this kind of content, make sure you guys subscribe because it really helps the channel out. and It lets YouTube know that I'm bringing you guys valuable content and I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. So today was my very first day driving the vehicle after I had charged the battery for two days. And here's the time. And I even hooked up one of these digital voltmeters inside. And after I turn off the vehicle, I come back in 10, 15 minutes. So look at what happens when I just try to roll up the window. The battery voltage here is already at 10.6. And that's after less than one minute. So I've come to this decision that this battery is toast. I checked the fluid level. All the cells are full. And this is only charging up at 10.81 volts. So I have to go ahead and swap this out. I'm gonna give myself an AGM because this Texas heat kills these lead acid batteries and it did not survive its very first winter. Let me start off with this statement that repairing an old battery is a waste of time. And I know that's a bold statement, but guys, I used to run a car dealership and I have tried used batteries in the past. If there was a way of saving money, I would have tried it. And I did try the used batteries for about two years and I've never gotten so many complaints from customers and 99% of them were battery related. So after I figured this out, I never once stuck 
another used battery in any vehicle and you should never do the same. Unless you're on a really tight budget, used batteries are just a waste of time and a waste of your money. If I didn't load test this battery, I would have actually replaced the component that was in charge of the EVAP system. And that part alone was over $200. which was more expensive than the battery, but it wouldn't have actually fixed the real issue, which was the battery. And if you think your battery is weak, just know this, there's really no disadvantage of putting a new battery in the vehicle. And it's really gonna help you figure out exactly what's wrong with your vehicle. So this is a must for me, as well as this simple $30 OBD2 reader. And I actually don't recommend OBD2 readers and I have good reasons. So I'll leave you guys a video down below. But if you do wanna get one OBD2 reader, this is it guys, for under $30. It makes drive cycle so easy as it auto refreshes and makes a beeping noise, letting you know that it's not complete. And it's very, very easy to use. So check out that out in the video description box down below. But back to the load tester here. As I mentioned earlier, this will also help me figure out if there's an issue with my charging system. So even if I have a good battery and my charging system is weak, what will happen is it will eventually make my battery weak. And if the battery is not near perfect, the computer is going to go and sense that again, and it's not going to run that monitor test. Let me start the vehicle so I can demonstrate the charging system test. And so now using the load tester, I can quickly verify that my charging system is within range. And I could even do a quick load on my alternator by pressing that button. And when I do, the engine reacts, the idle drops a little bit. And when I release it, the idle raises back up. And it did not go into the weak range here. Now I'm more confident that my charging system is working good as well as my battery. And I have an amp clamp right here. And let me put this under a load. So under a load, it's taking in close to 110 amps. And my alternator checks out. So using very inexpensive equipment from a $30 load tester to a $30 OBD2 reader, I'm able to quickly do a drive cycle and not waste hundreds of dollars in gas and save myself hours of time. So when it comes down to it, this is one of my favorite tools. If I could only have 10 tools in my toolbox, this would be one of them, as it's inexpensive, accurate, and it always gets the job done. Do you know what hurt more than putting these jumper cables on my ears? If you guys don't, hit that subscribe button and like the video. Ow, that hurts. Ow, please don't let it happen. And here's a quick tip. If you run into a vehicle that is not getting ready for an emissions test or has some weird fluke and you've determined that the battery is good or replace the battery and it's still not helping, go ahead and disconnect the battery for 24 hours and just realize you'll lose your inspection monitor data as well as the stereo code for your vehicle. But this method really does help with resetting the communications between the different computers and I've seen great results with that. If you have any questions, please comment down below and I'll do my best to point you in the right direction. Hey guys, do you wanna see a magic trick? You will hit the subscribe button at the same exact time as I make the shot. Now hit that subscribe button and don't forget to like the video. If you guys are new to this and you're struggling with maybe a drive cycle or anything else, Please comment down below. I'll point you guys in the right direction and make it a great day. Thank you again.